Hey friends, welcome back to Path of Exile, this time with Squire Flicker Strike. Now, a couple of notes about this build. Number one, this build is not tanky at all. You will die. Until you have enough damage, I recommend going ahead and picking up this wheel and this wheel to give yourself a little more survivability in both armor and maximum elemental resistance. This will make leveling up your build a little smoother until you have at least I'd say 10 million DPS or so and then you can stop caring about how survivable you are and just focus on doing damage. The second note here is this build is expensive. You should probably expect around 100 divs to be the minimum uh, to reach where I have gotten with this build but in order to perfect this build it will be much much more expensive. And then the third thing is I will cover how to craft some of these items, but I recommend buying or mirroring the sword as the cost of that craft is insane. So now with that out of the way, let's jump into the build. For those of you who are already familiar with Flicker Strike, please feel free to use the chapters to skip around because the first thing I'm going to cover is what Flicker Strike is. First a warning on Flicker Strike. Flicker Strike continuously teleports you to random positions around your target. This will get you killed if you just keep attacking things. Let's take Shaper for instance. Shaper has a giant beam that he fires that does a ton of damage, and if you are attacking while he's using this beam, Flicker Strike will inevitably put you into that beam and you will die. Think about this before you play Flicker Strike. It's fun, but if you think you're going to make a super tanky Flicker Strike build, you're more than likely just going to frustrate yourself. I'm not saying it's impossible. Just that the method that seems to work best for Flicker Strike is have enough survivability so you don't get instantly killed and do enough damage so nothing can hit you too many times. But our build is using Flicker Strike. Flicker Strike is a skill that teleports you to an enemy and strikes them with your weapon. It has a high cooldown, but that cooldown can be bypassed by utilizing a Frenzy Charge. So to use Flicker Strike as a main skill, the first question you need to answer is how you are maintaining your Frenzy Charges. There are a few ways to do this, but for our build, we're using Feral's Fur, or more accurately, Replica Feral's Fur. Feral's Fur gives us max Frenzy Charges and Power Charges, or in our case for Replicas, Frenzy and Endurance Charges, when we gain the Cat's Agility buff. Cat's Agility is one of the two cycling buffs from Aspect of the Cat, so we need to make sure that we have Aspect of the Cat somewhere in the build, and be sure that to support it with less duration support to make the cycle time of the buffs shorter. In almost all Flicker Strike builds, more Frenzy Charges equals more damage. For this build, it's the same. Since we are going Slayer, we're also going to capitalize on Endurance Charges with Masterful Form and Arn's Anguish. Masterful Form makes our max Endurance Charges equal to our max Frenzy Charges and gives us plus one max Frenzy, while Arn's Anguish transforms our Endurance Charges into Brutal Charges. Each one of those gives us a 3% chance to deal triple damage. More Frenzy Charges, more damage. To capitalize on our Frenzy Charge stacking, a great deal of our damage is coming from Ice Bite Support. Ice Bite Support is giving us flat cold damage per Frenzy Charge, and so are both of our rings. To give us more Frenzy Charges, we are using Darkrai Vectors, a Corrupted Combs Spirit, and Anointing Frenetic onto our amulet. This gives us a total of 9 Frenzy Charges. More potential sources of Frenzy Charges are a Crucible Tree on a weapon, and a Synthesized Implicit Ring. We have a total potential of 12 charges, but really just 11 since we're utilizing an unset ring for one of our rings, and we can't synthesize this one. Be warned that those last Frenzy Charges that I don't have in the build already are the most expensive and will not fit into a 100 dip budget. For the most expensive part of the base build, we have a one-handed sword and a squire. Squire is a unique shield that allows support gems to support an active skill from the main hand weapon. The weapon we will be using is a shaper one-handed sword with at least two mods. 40% more damage with attacks and socketed movement skills cost no mana. Any others supported by are bonuses but aren't really required. I recommend just buying one, as they can be found pretty cheap, but you can also use some mana fossils to craft it. This combo gives us a pseudo 7 link that has no mana cost and allows us to reserve most of our mana. For most content, just hold down the flicker strike button and let the game play itself. For harder targets or bosses, throw down your ancestral totems and then use berserk to maximize your DPS. 
If you're using Val Flicker Strike like I am, make sure you only have one or two targets in range before you use it, otherwise it's kind of a waste. And that is the build. It was fun to put together and has more room to grow, but I'm happy with where it is. I can kill an Uber even though it's not meant to do that, and it can breeze through most content. You just need to be aware of how Flicker Strike works so you can avoid some silly deaths. Now let's take a look at how to craft the sword in an ideal situation. Alright, so the craft we're going for here is going to be an expensive one no matter what we do. So the first step is going to be preparing this sword. This is what you want to look for. You want two prefixes. One is the Shaper mod, deal 40% more attack damage, and the other is the Elder mod, level 20 Ruthless. The way you're going to do this is you're going to awaken or orb two swords together, one that has this mod, one that has this mod, and one of them must be the jeweled foil, and you're going to awaken or orb onto the jeweled foil with the mod you want. Once you have this, you need to uh, annul if you need to, but you need an empty prefix and an empty suffix. Once you have that empty suffix, you're going to craft in prefixes cannot be changed and start the next step. And that is going to be reforging an influence uh, onto the sword. What we're going for here is any level of elemental damage, or supported by elemental uh, attack damage. I'm just going to hit undo a bunch and we're going to see how long it takes me, uh, but this can be a pretty lengthy process because there are so many influence mods that we could roll. While I'm going through this, uh, the reason I'm hitting undo rather than trying to manipulate what I'm getting the sword with one of these affixes is not very expensive. A lot of times it's going to be cheaper just to redo the sword. There are cases where if you have an empty prefix and an empty suffix still, you can manipulate it uh, or anything like that. But in order to reliably keep the, the two affixes we want, uh, we would need to use cannot roll attack modifiers with our null, and that is a divine on its own. All right, so we hit it pretty quickly. Uh, I think it was something like 10 attempts. I'll actually count them in the video. Uh, but we've got our support that we wanted. So we're gonna stop here. I think I got pretty lucky on this. Uh, I've, I've seen this take quite a long time. So just keep in mind that this is not a cheap or easy process. Again, it's probably cheaper just to take a mirror and go get a mirror service for a sword that you want. All right, so now that we have this, what we're going to start doing is uh, some exalt slams and annulling. So what we're gonna do is prefixes cannot be changed, and then we are going to exalt once, even though we already have a suffix, exalt, and then annul. The reason we're doing this is we want two suffixes, or three suffixes total, so that our null has a 1 in 3 chance rather than a 50-50 uh, to remove prefixes cannot be changed, and this will save us a little bit of money along the way. So we removed uh, one of the suffixes that we don't want, so we're going to just keep doing this. And what we're looking for here is either increased critical strikes, like we got here right here, or crit multi or multi-strike. Multi-strike is the best one for us, uh, but this one's pretty good. So at this point, what we can do is we can say we're done, right? Uh, how we do that is we go cannot roll attack modifiers. You can see that all of the mods that we want to keep have the attack tag. So we go with attack modifiers or cannot roll attack modifiers, annul off the suffix. If it annuls off the cannot roll attack miners, modifiers suffix, You'll need to put that back on and then annul. And then what we're going to do is do the same process of exalt and annul, looking for our final mod. And our final mod, and if you ever remove kind of a roll attack modifiers, add it on again. Uh, but our final mod is the cost no mana mod. Oop, add that back on, I made a mistake. Remove, add it back on. Add it back on. Annul. Add that. Nope. I forgot to click it again. And each time I make one of those mistakes, wow, that was really lucky. Did it in nine? Okay, that's 
it, this has been a crazy lucky run. Um, please do not expect this. This is a 1% chance uh, normally. We're removing a bunch of attack modifiers, so it's a little better, but it's still likely to take a while. Uh, but this is what we want. Uh, is, is something very similar to this. Now you might be thinking, okay, th this this really doesn't give us a whole lot. The damage on this is awful. The damage on this is awful, you're right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the suffix there and craft on a... Here we go, Blood Rage. So we're going to craft on T1 Blood Rage as the final touch, and we're going to copy this over. Now, I made a DPS-wise better sword earlier, and I've got that as an example in here, uh, in the POB. But just to take a look, and I'm actually glad that this sword turned out the way it did, uh, we're going to import this sword and create. Now, we still get 10 million DPS from this, uh, but it's not quite as good as, say, the other one. Um, and I'll show you why. So we're going to edit this and do crit chance crafted foil okay so the reason for this our critical strike chance is uh 6.77 and we've got critical strike chance support uh as opposed to having something like this which doesn't have that support uh but it has crit multi instead this gives us a ton of damage and if we go look at our crit chance as opposed to a crit strike we are actually losing 3.7 million dps but that's not exactly accurate so if we take the crit strike chance instead of the crit strike multi what that allows us to do is go to our skill tree and because our crit strike chance is much better we don't necessarily need overwhelm you can see right here removing overwhelm only loses 650,000 dps Whereas taking Edsman gives us almost 6 million. So if you end up in this situation where you have a crit strike chance as opposed to a crit strike multi, then all you're going to do is remove these two and add these two, and suddenly you're in a better position. But that is how you're crafting that sword. Again, that is a very expensive process. Keep in mind all of those times that I was crafting on prefixes cannot be changed that is two divs every time i do attacks cannot be rolled that's a one div so altogether even getting extremely lucky this sword alone probably cost us something around 100 to 200 divines again i encourage you if you have that kind of currency to throw around just see if you can mirror someone's because it will save you money in the long run now i will say this build has a pretty fair amount of flexibility. If you want to go less less cannon than I am, you can still pick up prismatic skin and soul of steel pretty easily by dropping a couple of other nodes. There's plenty of room to grow in the damage area just by getting a synthesized implicit ring or by getting a much, much better sword. If we go and take a look at what our damage looks like right now, we can see that a single maximum frenzy charge is adding a significant amount of damage. That's over 4 million DPS for a single frenzy charge. And that's with the weapon we have now. If we utilize one of the weapons we crafted in Craft of Exile and adjust our tree accordingly, we can see that the difference between a single Frenzy Charge is now something like 8 million DPS. And so you can see how quickly a single Frenzy Charge adds up to a huge amount of damage in this build. And one final note for the build. Right now, I'm utilizing a Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh for Masterful Form. I'm doing this because Masterful Form was the cheapest one to support with Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame. Keep in mind, this node is absolutely required for the build. So if you do not have the Forbidden Flesh and Flame, make sure you are picking this up and dropping one of the other nodes here. I'd recommend dropping Bane of Legends, it's a lot of DPS, but it doesn't give us as much as the others do. And that's it for this build. I've really enjoyed putting this build together. I always enjoy Flicker Strike builds. I think the next Flicker Strike build I'm probably going to do is probably just going to be a standard Forbidden Shaco Frenzy Charge build. Let me know what you think of the video below and if you have any suggestions or thoughts on how to make this build even better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.